do please feel encouraged to put in an entry or indeed entries and to encourage others you may know of who might like to enter. It would be great if you could help spread the word. I rather like the comment made by the novelist Jeanette Winterson, who said, poetry is not a painkiller, it's a cure. And where there is no cure, a poetry helps you to live with the problem. One of the great delights of judging poetry, as I have competitions, is that you get terrific insights in other people's individual ways of looking at things. Um, and I think one of the great things about this competition is that um, it deals with such a central area of human experience. Someone once said there are only three subjects for poetry. Uh, this is a three-quarter truth, incidentally. Um, time, love and death. But of course, the world of medicine and health uh, impinges, well, there's more than impinge, uh, inhabits uh, certainly those three categories. The fourth missing ingredient, of course, is life. I'm hugely looking forward to seeing um, what comes in and seeing what the angle of approach is, um, how it, uh, like all poetry, um, commutes between experience and meaning, um, and indeed where it ends up. And of course, the young poets, I'm sure, will find this too, um, that you don't always know where a poem's going. And part of the excitement of writing poems is that it is um, in this quest of meaning and experience. Um, it does quite often find its own way, and it can be quite startling where a poem ends up. And I like to think of you, the young poets having the excitement of that kind of discovery. A specifically medical excitement and experience was editing an anthology for Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital when they were um, starting an appeal. This really came about because my son had had some treatment at Great Ormond Street. And uh, I mentioned this possibility of doing something to help their appeal to Ted Hughes, who said, oh yes, go ahead and do it. And encouraged me, in fact, to um, get in, into contact immediately with a number of eminent poets. And uh, the whole thing took off and uh, was extremely exciting to do. Everyone involved, the publishers, the paper makers, um, the Times published a, a poem a day for a week from the anthology. It made over £65,000. I was quite a late starter in poetry terms. I wrote a little at school, quite a lot when I left university and taught in Kenya, but didn't start sending stuff in until I was in my late 20s. Um, and I've been very fortunate that since then it's become one of the crucial centres of my life. But I cannot now imagine what my life would have been like without that wonderful centre. I've been lucky enough to chair the Arvin Foundation, which has, uh, runs creative writing courses um, and is long established. Uh, I've been lucky enough to direct the Cheltenham Festival of Literature. One of the great virtues and one of the points of interest for me is that international aspect. I mentioned that I had taught in Africa and um, I think, again, the input that we now get, and indeed to the English language as well as geographically in terms of entrance, and there are so many Englishes now that have been enriched um, by what's come in feeding the lake from other countries. Um, and um, I think that the international aspect, certainly uh, the fact that um, it's a generous allocation of lines, I think it's up to 50 lines, isn't it? That's correct. Uh, and uh, I think all that is um, extremely positive. The themes can be anything in the, about medicine in the broader sense. We've had people writing about their personal experience of health, about a family member, or just about their general interest in what's been happening about medicine around the world. Yes, and I think that um, picks up on what I was saying about the range of poetry that you can deal with so many subjects, with grief, with joy. It can be playful. Um, certainly the poems that, uh, that I've written for myself that have a medical context, one or two of them are... Um, playful was one about um, um, called Coconuts in the Cardiac Ward, which is about a, um, a builder in the bed next door singing in his sleep. But all I'm saying is that I think the again that combination of head and heart, of lament, of joy, um, that poetry can do it all and can do it. Uh, the other thing, of course, too, is thinking of the 14 to 18 year olds. Um, entering this. We think of what happens to the human creature between those ages, both physically and in terms of mental development. I mean, this is, I'm really looking forward to um, that aspect of it as well, to seeing and indeed to learning from it, um, because I think 
Um, young writers keep you up to date with the language. They keep you up to date with changes in outlook and indeed individual temperament, of course, comes into it as well. Lawrence Sale, thank you very much indeed. Great pleasure. I look forward to reading the poems.